And if you're in year 11 and this video is mainly aimed at you, you're already sick of people telling you that this is such an important year for you. If you're not in year 11, then why not comment to leave some advice for this new year 11 and what you wish you'd done differently in your year 11. But I want to take that stress off you. Remember, you can do this. I want to map it out. I want to show you exactly how this year is going to go. And I'm going to show you these little things that you can make sure that you're doing at the right times to make sure that you are a massive success at the end of that year 11. Plan to have relaxing times. Think about the times of the year where you don't want to be working and make sure that you work hard enough in the times you do want to be working so you don't feel kind of guilty about taking those breaks. Now I'm talking about success for you, but I'm talking about you absolutely smashing your exams. You can do this, it's gonna be a tough year, but believe in yourself, you can do this. I'm Kit Best Maths and this is Gorilla Physics. And my students in this year's GCSEs absolutely smashed them. Results that wouldn't be out of place in independence. So I really know how to prepare students for their exams. So come on this kind of journey with me. And my journey to 10K subscribers over this year, if that's my target for this year, is your journey to all those grade eights and nines that you want. Earlier on in the year, it's gonna be about picking your courses for next year. Use that as motivation. Decide what you want to do and then think how you're going to get there, what grades you're going to need to get, how are you going to have to work that little bit harder to get what you want that next year. I'd encourage you though to think about grades in terms of what you want or your aims. So I've just mentioned grade eights and grade nines, but maybe your grade nine is actually a grade five. You know that is a realistic target and if you get that, you'd be absolutely proud and you get onto that course next year. Early on in year 11, take the time to review the year nine and 10 stuff. Make sure you've got good quality notes that you're actually going to want to learn from and revise from when it comes to the exams at the end of the year. So don't kid yourself about mock exams. Be prepared for them. Make sure you put in the same effort into those that you're planning to put in for the real thing in the mock exam. That's the test. There's so many times where kids want to say to me, oh, I wanted to see how I'd do without revision so I'd know how much revision to put in. No. If you want to get the top grades, you put in the same effort you're expecting to put in and from there you know whether you're going to need to work hard on that or actually that's good enough. Now we plan out year 11 for you with those two important mock exams because we know that science tells us the Ebbinghaus kind of system of what we call the forgetting curve tells us that if you don't revise something repeatedly, you forget it. One of the most important things to get right in year 11 is to review your mock exams and make sure you unpick and think exactly what you don't know. It's going to be different to your friends what is the bits that you find the hardest and they're the bits you need to prioritise working on. The Ebbinghaus kind of research suggests that the first time you learn something is right there at the forefront of your memory and you can take a test on it, you can do really well on the test. Now if you come back after two weeks you'll have forgotten like about 50% of it. If you come back after about four weeks you'll be down to about 20% of it. And if you come back after six weeks then you're going to have lost almost everything from that. So if you repeatedly revisit that, it doesn't take much time to bring yourself back up to that point of making sure that you know it all. So we plan out your year 11 because we know how students learn by, by science. So, so make sure that you follow what is intended to happen throughout year 11, that you don't just think to yourself, well, I know better than my teachers and I don't need to work hard in the way that they're telling me to. So I'm going to map out a typical year for you. Essentially, there's going to be two mock exam periods and they're normally going to be in the run up to Christmas, so sort of November, December time, and just after the February half term, so the run up to Easter. Those mock exam periods should be pretty intense periods for you. And actually in a way they're more intense than the real thing because they all fit into like two weeks, okay, which in the real GCC will fit into four weeks. And also another thing is freezing cold in the December and often the February mock exams, right? And it won't be freezing cold in the real thing. So try not to let that stress you out. Develop coping strategies through those times. If you haven't done this already, make sure you know exactly what's expected of you in each of your exams. So in physics, you need to memorize some equations. So that's why I've written a book called Memorize Equations for GCSE Physics. In chemistry, there's some equations you need to memorize. <laughs> Ask good questions. You need to be sure about what you're being taught. If you're not sure, ask. I promise you, teachers actually quite like it when you ask a good question. So ask anything that doesn't make like perfect sense. So make sure that you're not comparing to other people and you're being realistic and that you just know exactly what you're aiming for and you know that the hard work you put in has paid off 
and that's what's got you the grade. Right now, going back to school, you need to just get started and get into good habits. Start as you mean to go on. Make sure that you get all your resources ready, and I'm not just talking about revision guides. Maybe make sure you've got the right textbook for your course, because revision guides, although they're good and they cover everything, they don't always take you above that kind of good pass level. So if you're aiming above a five, I reckon you need to make sure that you're getting something more than just a revision guide or more than just relying on like the bite size or online resources. They rarely take you beyond the kind of C grade level. One of the most important things that I think students need in year 11 is good leveled checklists of what's coming up in their exams. Work through those and think what you need to work on. So get the course textbook, maybe the course textbook that you use in your school because you're familiar with it and it can help you to make sure you've got that continuity or maybe a different one because then you've got more resources and more questions to practice. It's one of the main habits of people that get the top grades, the sevens, the eights and nines, is they don't have empty pages in their workbooks. They have consumed all of the resources and that just means getting started. It doesn't mean making a timetable and planning it all out. It means get that resource Get the correct workbook for your exam syllabus and then just get started. Work steadily, do a few pages a night, all the weeknights for the next month and you'll see how quickly you consume resources. Another one of my main tips, and I make sure all my classes do this and it's one of the reasons they do so well, is we cover everything by Christmas time. We make sure we've covered everything for the first time by that December, January break. You don't want to be coming into Easter finding out something that's really, really hard right at the end of the course, that's the first time you've seen it. You want to know that's coming up now. Make sure it's not a surprise for you. You've at least done the textbook page, watched a few videos, and when you get to that lesson, you're not thinking, oh my word, this is brand new, how am I supposed to do this? You're already filling your head with all the revision you're doing. You're then just gonna start panicking. But if you've come across it before, then you're just going to be making sure in those lessons that you can do it and you're not put off and you're capable of making sure you can answer those questions in that exam. So don't let your teachers be an excuse. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you've got notifications on because this year I'm going to be doing a series of GCSE live shows where I want to take you on that journey and make sure that you know exactly where you should be at different points in your years and where you can actually ask me if you need any specific help and if you're not sure about any of those things. You might not be in this year group now, but why not leave a comment and say what you wish you'd done differently when you were in year 11.